Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of my QuickSocket I.O. tutorial. Uh, in this part, we are going to talk about WebSocket. Uh, I mentioned before that this very simple web server that we started with GUnicorn does not support WebSocket. Uh, the problem with that is that this forces the client to, uh, to do this polling cycle to receive events. Uh, so, just so that you understand what I mean, uh, here we're looking at the network tab, so, so we're seeing all the requests that are issued by the client. So you can see that uh, the client started issuing this repeated pair of requests. You are going to see in a few seconds that there's going to be two more, there you go. Uh, so, so this is the mechanism by which the client receives events when there's no WebSocket support in the server. Uh, so this mechanism is great because it runs pretty much anywhere. Uh, so so as, as long as you have HTTP support on both ends, you, you can do this. Uh, but it's also not great because uh, nowadays uh, all, all the uh, modern web browsers support WebSocket. And WebSocket is a, uh, it's a real permanent connection. It's much more efficient to send, uh, to send messages in a bidirectional way. Uh, so what we would like to do is to add WebSocket support to our server. Uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it. Uh, so let's stop this server. Uh, and uh, the, the first way that I'm going to show you is based on a different web server that's called Eventlet. So I'm going to install Eventlet. Uh, this is an asynchronous server. Uh, not to be confused with AsyncIO, uh, this is a, a different type of async implementation. Uh, so I'm going to install it, and uh, lucky for us, there is a, uh, a GUnicorn worker for Eventlet, so we can continue to use GUnicorn, but we are going to switch to the Eventlet worker. So now we have to say dash "-k", Eventlet. This uh, this tells GUnicorn that we want the Eventlet worker. Uh, it's also uh, a good uh, or safe thing to limit the number of workers to one. Uh, and this is because when you work with an asynchronous server, the um, the um, handling multiple connections happens through the asynchronous uh, support in in the framework. Uh, you do not need to have multiple workers. Uh, so a single worker using Eventlet should be able to handle thousands of client connections uh, without problems. So we're going to keep that restriction to one. Uh, there is a way to, uh, to run multiple workers. It's fairly more complex, and I am not going to talk about it in this tutorial, but it is in, uh, in the Socket I.O. documentation, the Python Socket I.O. documentation, if you are interested in doing that. Uh, so next we specify the, uh, the application, and I also have the reload, which we can keep. So now we are running the Eventlet web server, which supports WebSocket. So just to, uh, to clear this, let's reconnect. And here we have the connected message, so everything is working. And if we look at the network, uh, so, so you can see that there are a few of these weird requests, but uh, here you can see that uh, this transport argument is pulling for all of them but one. So eventually, after a little bit of back and forth, the server and the client agreed to use WebSocket, and this is the the connection that from now on is going to be used for all the bidirectional messages that uh, are exchanged between the client and the server. Uh, so um, if you remember uh, when I closed the client in the previous example, in the previous part, uh, it took the server a few seconds to realize that the client was gone. And this was because the client was polling and when the client is polling, there is really no immediate way to detect the disconnection. Uh, the client basically decides that the client disconnected when it stops receiving messages. So it waits for a few seconds, and if it doesn't get any message, 
it calls the client disconnected uh, with a WebSocket connection that is different. Uh, since there is a physical connection between the client and the server, uh, the moment I close this tab, then the server is going to detect the disconnection. So uh, let me open a new tab so that I don't lose the window. And now take a look here uh, when I disconnect. So immediately we get the disconnection. So let's bring it back. And there we are, another connection now. Uh, so, so this is one way. Uh, so now let's look at a second way to do this. Uh, so for, for this second option, we are going to use AsyncIO. Uh, so let's stop GUnicorn. And now we are going to use a, a different uh, option provided by the socket IO server, which is to write the server with async IO. Um, so what we need to do here, uh, I'm, I'm sure most of you know that uh, when you write an application with async IO, you have to use a different set of keywords. Uh, there's async and await. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to rewrite the app.py application using async.io. So um, let's say, let's copy this to async app.py. And now uh, we are going to convert this to async.io. So first thing to do is to switch to the async server class. Uh, second thing is to change the Whisky app to ASGI app. ASGI is the standard uh, way for uh, web applications and web servers to communicate when using async IO. Uh, and then our handlers are now going to be async functions. Um, one more thing that is a good idea to add is in the server, we are going to say set the async mode to ASGI. And this is what's going to configure the server uh, to work in this ASGI mode uh, inside the ASGI app wrapper. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the Python socket IO package uh, supports a number of ways, uh, both in the in the traditional Python and the async IO Python. Uh, it supports a number of platforms, a number of different servers. So this async mode option allows you to specify which one you want to use. Uh, in many cases, it, uh, the, the, the uh, server auto detects uh, what you know, what, what you want to use. But uh, in this case, this is one case where uh, we, we have to tell it that we want to use ASCII. Um, so there we go. This is our new async server. So uh, to use this server, we uh, we can work with UVCorn, which is a uh, an async IO based web server. Uh, so let's go ahead and install uh, UVCorn with the standard option. This is going to bring uh, a number of optimizations and also the WebSocket support. Okay, there we go. So now uh, all we need to do is we need to run the application with UVCorn. Um, so for UVCorn, we can say just the, uh, the application specification. So in the same way as we did with GUnicorn, we include the name of the Python file, a colon, and then the name of the application instance. So uh, actually, we can we can also use the reload option, which we were using before. And there we go. So now we should be able to check here. We need to make sure. Uh, let's connect one more time. And let's make sure that, that it is. So here is the, uh, here is the WebSocket connection. And that is it. So 
now uh, we have the the connected message is there and let's try to close the tab and make sure that the disconnection also happens immediately and there we go so that is it now you have learned two ways to run a WebSocket socket IO server um, so uh, I'm going to work mostly on the first server uh, for the rest of the tutorial uh, occasionally I may also jump into this one the async IO server uh, if there is anything that needs to be done differently uh, but for the most part the server and async server classes are basically they have a one-to-one -one mapping and the only difference is that many of the methods most of the methods actually in the async server class are coroutines so you have to await them uh, but other than that the support in the server and async server classes are the same so anything you learn in the uh, in the rest of this tutorial uh, that I show with the traditional Python approach you can also do with the async Python approach